Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Well, the DxO Mark results are in for the sensor tests on the D600. Very exciting news for Nikon shooters that want to get the D600. As you may remember in my last videos on the D600, I've been alluding to the fact that I expect great things out of this sensor. 24 megapixels, big fat uh, sensor sights on the sensor, full frame, and uh, expecting it to perform I didn't think it was going to beat the D800 because that's the flagship, um, yeah, other than the D4, but as far as their megapixel flagship right now at full frame, but I expected it to be close, and it is. Bad news if you're a Canon shooter because there's nothing on the Canon side that takes the D600. As a matter of fact, the D600 smokes the Canon 5D Mark III and ouch, that's got to hurt if you're a 5D Mark III shooter and Nikon's new $2100 camera comes out and jumps all over your $3500 5D Mark III. Let's have a look at the results and see just how badly the Nikon D600 beats the 5D Mark III. Now first of all, on overall scores, it's 94 to 81. That's a fairly significant difference in scores on the DxO Mark sensor scores. It's already leading you to think it's excelling in most areas. So the first area we look at is portrait color depth. And that's 25.1 on the D600 versus 24 on the 5D Mark III. Not a huge win here for the 600, but a win nonetheless. Now the next area is a big one when you're looking at any camera, and that's dynamic range. We're looking here at 14.2 on the Nikon D600 to 11.7 on the Canon 5D Mark III. Now this is a significant difference on dynamic range and really hands the crown to the Nikon D600 and we start to see why the 600 sensor is so much better than the 5D Mark III. Several points on dynamic range is excellent. We're always looking for more dynamic range in a photo. We had lots of it in film and it's always a big bonus as we get more and more on the digital sensors. Now the next category listed on the DxO Mark report is what they call sports or low light ISO. This is one of the biggest things that I look at because this determines how your camera shoots in low light and how it performs at its higher ISO settings. It's very important to me very important to a sports photographer, which is why they call this category sports. Important to wedding photographers like myself. Uh, it's important in a lot of things. Anytime you're not out in bright light outside, this is going to be an important feature. And this is where the D600 really shines and kicks the butt of the 5D Mark III. 2980 to 2293. That's a pretty significant margin for the D600 over the 5D Mark III at high ISO settings. Significant enough that I would think that will be causing quite a few people to be raising eyebrows and wondering if perhaps the D600 is a better camera for them to be shooting with than a 5D Mark III. Certainly is for me, and it puts the D600 right where my expectations were. I was thinking that this camera was going to have an excellent sensor, be a great all-round camera, and it looks to me like it's perfect for my needs. I'm not sure if it's going to be perfect for your needs. If you're heavily invested in the Canon system, then it's probably not worth it for you to sell off the 5D Mark III and glass and all your other accessories, despite the fact that the D600 is proving to be a better performing camera. The 5D Mark III is still a nice performing camera, just not as good as the D600. Now, if you're in the Nikon side and you're looking at an upgrade or looking for a second camera, the D600 is an excellent choice to be looking at. If you're really hard on your cameras and you need something extremely rugged, you may want to consider the D800 for its little beefier build. But I can say from experience, I've shot my D7000 professionally and I've never had any problem with the build quality on my 7000. In fact, I love the camera and mine looks great almost original new condition and I've used it a lot. That's why the D600 for me is the perfect camera. Great price, great value for the money and now we see it's one of the best performing cameras out there. Beats the Canon 5D Mark III. In fact, if I'm reading DxO Mark rankings right, it is second only to the Nikon D800. So now we have the top two DSLRs on DxO Mark is number one, the Nikon D800, and number two, the Nikon D600. There you go, folks. Thanks for tuning in. 
Stay tuned. We'll be back soon with some new videos, some new articles. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on in the world of photography here at ArtOfTheImage.com. Thanks.